notes here of how good content strategy in source in English can can really um, either leverage and and, and um, help your localization or they can actually become a problem. Um, so these are you know all of these these points these these check marks here are things where we really agree. Uh, I agree with WHP from a content strategy point of view that we should do this in English because it's going to be good for for English content. It's going to be good for our scale for our customer experience, but it's also going to be good for um, translation. Um, so just a couple of, you know, a couple of tips, handful of tips here. Uh, did us a semantic framework, use the semantics, use them appropriately, use them in a valuable way. And you will, you will be able to, um, to, to reap the benefits of that. Uh, leverage the, the proper data mechanisms um, for the semantic con uh, content. You know, uh, con keys came out in the later versions of Dita, not because it's cool, um, but because it does help scale and it does help processes like um, dynamic content, personalized content and translation. So use these semantic tags with things like con key rep. Don't use the old school conditional things that we, we used to do um, even back in the early days of Dita 1.0 and, and 1.1. Uh, the reason keys were made was to get, you know, to, to sort of allow a different option than putting a ton of, uh, of conditions in your content. Uh, we all remember, or those of us that worked in FrameMaker, we know when conditions go crazy. It's when you run out of colors, you know, FrameMaker showed you the colors for each different condition. When you run out of colors, that should be a sign that um, you should stop using conditions. You have too many there, right? So, Things like this um, are really important. The, the fourth bullet here, the fourth check mark is the example that you see on the right. And that is um, authors using formatting markup um, to, to uh, tag content, right? Formatting based markup. So I think I might have to come off of uh, full screen here just to show you what's going on on this one. So this is an analysis that of one of our customers that, that Dominic did and, put, and, and spotted stuff like this, not just as an outlier, but as a regular practice that the authors were using. So basically you guys can see what's going on here. We're using the paragraph for a break um, and, and you can imagine what that does to our segmentation, right? But we're doing the paragraph so that we can break and so that we can get this output. And the examples of this with different types of markup are, are rampant in, in uh, undisciplined, uh, undiscipl undisciplined writing shops. You should not do that and, and please do not. And, and that is you know, some of the stuff where um, we're not supposed to do that in, in English. And, and definitely if we're translating to 27 languages, that's gonna cost us and we don't want that, right? Um, then the last one here is, is you know, Look at things like, like vector graphics, like, like SVGs that have um, translatable text within the, in the callouts rather than, than raster images where everything's flattened and, and very expensive to change if you ever have to change it. Okay? So there's a lot of good things you can do with your content structure. There's a lot of things that you know, kind of make you go like this. Like, don't, don't do that. That's, that's, not helping, that's not helping us out. Okay? So those are some structure tip, right? Um, quality tips. Uh, this is, WHP talks about um, applying good writing rules in the source, um, catching it up front and not letting, letting it get into the editorial stream or not letting it get into the output because that then, th those errors, those um, inconsistencies, those style violations, those become expensive to track down, to fix, and then to, um, you know, to, to put back into the, into the pipeline. So we really want to do things that are, um, that are good for English, but also are going to get us some benefit in, localiz in the localization um, pipeline. So a few things here. Um, let's, let's try to get more topic reuse rather than getting too clever at the sentence level, right? Dita is a topic-based architecture. And I, I, I tell you know, our, our customers all the time, and when I used to teach a lot of classes, I would say, get your topic writing down. Get it down right, and you, you use that as the, the core of your content, 
and, and the core of your reuse strategy, you're going to be happy. Dita is a topic-based architecture. So below, below that, you can either get some added benefit or you can make, you can make yourself some problems. So we want to try to emphasize good topics, and that includes for reuse. Uh, you, you also want to catch quality-wise, you want to check, catch any sort of style violations early, like I said, and, and that could be done. I, I noticed on the chat that, you know, people are using hyper STE, active links, schema trial. Those are great. Get, get that content um, consistent, get it uh, consistently styled and get everybody working in the same, with the same sort of voice and, and styles. That is going to help all of your content, including localization. Um, and then of course, last, I, I'm going to call out this last bullet here. Um, it takes people to this. You're not going to be, be able to automate all of this. Uh, and, and the tools are only going to get you so far. You need good writers. You need people who are really, you know, pros at, at the, the old school things like editorial decisions, right? And, and enforcing styles. People need to uh, be involved and make good, make, make good judgment decisions and, and also work together. And that is, um, I think is underlooked. Uh, we don't have a lot of editors anymore, even though we sort of, you know, ask for them and say, hey, you should hire some editors. So if we can't have editors, then let's just have a very rigorous peer review process where everybody is enforcing internal styles. That's gonna help localization as well. So here's an example here um, that I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna zoom in again. Um, so this is sort of the, uh, the consequences of not having consistent style. You see, there's a good one up here. Um, again, this is from some of Dominic's analysis for one of our customers. There's a good example here. Of if you wrote this once and used them, think about what I said earlier, use the proper semantics. You see the user input and parameter name in here, UI control, uh, and use the reuse mechanisms that, mechanisms that DITA has to offer. Um, with, this is using from con keys. If you can do that, structure one sentence, you can write it once and pay for translation once in, in each language, or you can pay 200 times. And, and I obviously don't have enough um, room on my slide to put 200 examples of how this particular sentence was written. Uh, but, but in the analysis that um, WHP did for this customer of ours, they found this 300 times and figured that, hey, we're gonna have to pay 200 times for this because a couple, you know, a few, we can normalize some of this, but the other 200, those are unique sentences with unique segment segmentation combinations. And, and um, you know, that it, to me is a no brainer. Let's spend the time, uh, let's spend the time to design these sentences, these uh, pieces of content so that they are reusable so that they do maximize our, um, they do maximize our consistency. If you maximize your consistency, you're going to maximize your uh, your customer satisfaction. You're going to mass, ma uh, maximize your accuracy. You're going to maximize um, your quality, and then you're going to minimize your costs. And that's you know that is a no brainer, but it does take work. That's hard. That that sentence on the right, uh, uh, the the first one, the pay once sentence. That's a hard one to architect, and you've got to set that those keys upright, and you've got to do the the engineering behind that sentence at the top, but when you do, you're gonna scale, you're gonna, do, you're gonna be way better off if you do that. So um, that's where quality, consistency, and, and really good sound editorial practice come into play. Last piece here is the process. Uh, this, is, um, this is where it sort of becomes a dark art for me really is like, okay, what do you need and when? And, and when are we gonna get it back, right? Uh, so I think one of the, the things that uh, I've seen WHP recommend is going to an agile, um, an agile process. And that again, makes sense because we're in a topic, a topic paradigm now, not a book-based book paradigm anymore. That fits in with agile teams, but it, it, agile development teams that are working per, let's say per ticket in JIRA, Right, that ticket for for that feature, it might be attached to three or four topics that that are meant to document that new feature. Uh, it works well. Agile localization works well. At software shops, 
uh, that are already thinking that way. But I believe it works well uh, with with non software as well, you know, medical device, automotive, whatever it is, whatever it might be, uh, because it does leverage the topic nature of the data architecture. The promise of data has always been we work in topics, so we have smaller chunks that we need to manage, uh, that we need to deliver, that we need to reuse. Uh, we can we can leverage that. Uh, so why wait for a full book to be done before we drop it into localization? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. And and the localization provider should be encouraging companies to do this at a topic level rather than books. You know, just give us the full book. Well, how much time does that burn? And then how much of a bottleneck is that because that workload isn't balanced out? Um, that's those are the questions that uh, don't make any sense. They don't make any business sense. So let's go to a better process where we have smaller chunks that are going into translation. And that does a lot of the, that, that, that just organically gives us a lot of benefit, okay? So um, this is, in this particular um, analysis, uh, going to Agile versus the waterfall, uh, cut the, the, the localization time um, basically by 80%, two and a half months to two weeks uh, by being able to do things in unison and not in a silo and not in a straight waterfall line. 